Hey everybody, Dave Clark, aka The Pattern Guy. Hey, I uh, haven't seen you guys in a little bit. Um, I'm not going to put this video out. It's Saturday right now. It's Saturday in the evening, okay? Um, I'll try to get this video out Monday. Um, I, <laughs> buddy of mine once told me I got more excuses than China's got rice, okay? And I, I looking back at a lot of my videos, I said, oh, I got to do this, this. is To me, it's not so much excuses. It's life happens, okay? It's uh, my excuses are realities, okay? A lot of the reasons I haven't been getting videos out lately is um, I told you my parents, they bought some property, so I've been taking care of that stuff. Hopefully, uh, Joe and I were actually there today. Joe was taking care of some electrical. Uh, the guy had put a bunch of new carpeting in there, so I'm cutting the doors down. Uh, hopefully, we're going to wrap that up tomorrow, Sunday. Um, if I get back in time... I'll try to get something out, but not probably Monday. I'm going to try to get some taping done and we'll give the camera to Joe and get it out. Okay. Now, the reason I'm saying something today is um, I just finished my supper. I got to come out to shop and I have to cut some doors down. Okay. Um, and I'm thinking I don't want to do it. Okay. One of the reasons I don't want to do it, and one of the reasons I haven't been filming a lot lately, too, is my shop is a mess. It is such a mess. Uh, it, it always will be. We'll never get it totally clean in here. But one of the things, don't get into the, hey, keep, keep your shop clean. Because I'm sitting there, uh, I don't want to work anymore. I'm done for the day. I got to get these doors done because Joe and I are going to go up there early tomorrow morning and it, they just got to be done. You know, I have no other time to do them, so I got to do them now. All right, so one of the reasons why I don't want to do them now, and I'm embarrassed to show you this, and this is why I haven't been filming also, okay? But I, I just want to show you because, like I said, life lessons and to be a professional and, you know, to make it enjoyable you got to enjoy what you do okay and for for the most part i do but when my shop starts looking like this okay there's my workbench right there actually this is a cooler i've been taking up to the foundry here and there full of liquids i tell you guys to stay liquefied there's house cleaning products here that we took up to the apartments there's uh, oils there that bag over there is usually full of my um, shop stuff to go up to um, the foundry over here on the oscillating spindle sander there's Dean's you know my wife just went for a bike ride you know I can work around that and then we can move that easily but anyhow there's Dean's jobs over there I gotta start machining those this stuff here is a bunch of nuts and bolts and stuff I got out of a shop. There's the doors I got to cut down right there. I got stuff on that machine. The only machine I don't have stuff on is this one here. There, that bin is full of waste oil and stuff from down the foundry I got to get up. Um, just went and got my tanks from Dean's. Blaine's going to come over here with parts of the machine, uh, the, the molding machine we got to work on this week. So I got to bring those things down here. They got to go get put away though. So, you know, here's a drill press table. So it's got a bunch of crap on it. Um, I got this from the white pipe guy. Here's another Y pipe. So we're going to be working on that this week sometime. Okay. And then here over here on my table saw, I got more, there's more nuts and bolts I got and stuff. And there's a casting that's been sitting there for, oh man, that thing's got to be sitting there for three months. Easy. You know, so I've been avoiding using my table saw because I don't want to move that because it's heavy. I don't want to have to keep on moving it back and forth. But, you know, at one point the guy, uh, I'm, I'm supposed to be getting a job off, called me up. He's like, he's like, yeah, can you get it done real quick? Can you get it? It's like, yeah. And it, that was about four weeks ago. Still sitting here. Okay. So, um, oh, real quick, nice find I found. Okay, um, this was a Dayton belt sander, disc sander. I took the disc off. I'm going to put a wire wheel on it, and I'm going to use this for uh, trimming castings, okay? So 
over here I have these three pieces of plywood ABC um, you know I just unscrew it screw it up put this on my table and I trim all the castings in here so we cast these little pipes the other day I believe they're gating it into here so we had to cut the gating off but you can see I had to grind the gating off right and then the other end but we got to trim all of this flash up here okay so that's what I've been doing here you know you get a little die grinder okay so, but I mean, that's a mess. I got to clean it up and that. So, um, you know, I'm still, still working on deeds. I promise I get that done this weekend. I got to see if we can get that done. And, and then, and then we, we burn our boxes out here. And it, you know, my son, I've been asking him to do that for the last couple of days. They're in the way, but they're not, you know, so he'll get that. But, um, you know, it was embarrassing, but you know, I, I'm doing it to, Kind of show you guys like look just don't don't do this because like i said right now i just don't want to work out here i have to work here and i don't want to you know so keep it so it's enjoyable to do what you got to do and everything and that and that so what i'll do like i said i'm gonna let you go for tonight i just wanted to show you this another life lesson okay and um you know i'll try to get it cleaned up in here real quick we'll go on some stuff like i said we got that new white pipe thing we got to get going on that we'll show you and the cylinders. I got to get the cylinders done. So next week, definitely we'll be doing cylinders. Okay. All right. See you guys tomorrow or uh, Sunday or Monday. Okay. Okay, guys. Still Saturday night. Just uh, put one of these. Uh, like I said, I I, I don't want to work out here because there's nowhere to work. So I'm trying to find a place to put these doors to work on them. All right. So. I just kind of scoochied over some mess on the drill press, put it up there, and I, I try not to, I, I try to be as humble as I can, I know I got a fat head, especially when it comes to powder making and stuff, but it's, I try to be as humble as I can, and I try not to speak ill of other people and that, but one of the reasons I'm doing this channel is because I want you guys to become good craftsmen, okay? and the guy that we bought my mom and dad bought some apartments off of um he, he allegedly hearing some of the tenants they said that he wanted to be the craftsman thing so but I, I i like i said i hate running people down but this is one thing don't do this okay so <clears throat> i'm looking at the bottom of these doors he had started cutting these doors down and look at just how that's just <laughs> unbelievable I mean that just looks like a rat chewed that off you know and uh, I don't know how like look at how like you can see see if I do it this way I gotta get a good camera but you can see how bad there's just a big bulge and see if we could do it that way yeah see that big bulge he left right there you know so that's just <laughs> I'd be ashamed of that. And this is this is a thing, you know. This is why uh, this is why I'm doing this. I want to teach you guys how not to do this, okay? And I, I didn't want to do this lesson, and then uh, you know I'm gonna be doing more of this down the road. But I want to do like the carpentry stuff with the carpentry stuff in it. But I figured since I got this, and this this is a really extreme case, you know. So what I'm gonna do is. Um, without getting into this too far what i'll do is i'll just put a square on there you know get myself a square line and uh try to square these up as best we can we'll go from there but i i you know like i say he kind of putting other people down and th things like that but you know this is this is what i'm trying to teach you guys okay so again we'll see you either tomorrow night sunday night or uh monday okay talk to you guys Okay guys, back in. Hey, it's a couple days later after I showed you my uh, real messy shop here. Uh, still pretty much messy. I did clean up a little bit, but not so much. Um, I got, Dean's got to get these parts done, or I got to get the parts done for Dean. Okay, I'm trying to get them done. Um, right now, it's, I got so much personal stuff going, I, I'm not trying to diss you guys off here and that. So, I, you know, hopefully next week I'll be able to get back on my regular schedule again, all right? So here, um, I was showing you these parts. We had them up in the angle block before. Okay, we faced one surface off. I started showing you how I was boring them. So then we 
he had to put six bolt holes in there. That's going to bolt a basically a um, linear bearing, or not, it's not a linear, it's actually a, um, uh, it's, a it's a ball screw, it's a ball screw, okay? So ball screws got to go in here, we got to mount that in here, and then these are going to mount up to a column. All right, so I, I drilled and uh, counterbored these holes. This little flat spot's called a counterbore. And the reason we put that on there, there is a, a little bit of draft on these things. So um, they want to be flat, so uh, we did the counterbore on there, okay? So I should have showed you should have showed you the tapping. I actually tapped these right in, in, in the uh, bridge port. You can do that with the with bigger tabs, it's a half inch tab. So I was able to uh, go ahead and tap these. It's just, I'm trying to get them done too. And then uh, it's kind of get later in the night. We got to do uh, supper shortly here. But I figured, you know what? This last process I'm going to show you. Um, I, I had to make, um, you know, one of the reasons I'm doing this too. And I realized, like I said, I wanted to become a MacGyver site. However, you know, guys that have been doing stuff for a long time, we make our own tools in that also, okay? So basically, to make that counter bore, I do have counter bores. However, I don't have a counter bore that big, okay? So what I ended up doing, um, as you go along, like I keep on telling you guys too, like hit, like, um, you know, go to flea markets, machine shop auctions, everything. And there's a few things, you know, everybody kind of wants to go get the end mills, the carbide inserts, uh, drills, taps, you know, all that kind of stuff. One of the things, like with metal lays right now, when I first started out, carbide was just really starting to get going. We used high speed steel, okay? And uh, what I ended up doing was I got a, uh, it's a 5.8 hole, okay, so I took a piece of 5.8 stock, all right, like I said, I don't have a lathe yet, so I just cut it off on the metal bandsaw we got over there, and I got that new belt sander. Just belt sanded each end, beveled it a little bit, okay. So then what I did, I got my V-block out, set this in the V-block, here's, here's the piece of, uh, this is a lathe uh, bit, okay, high speed steel lathe bits, 316. So what I did, I measured it across, and it was actually measured a two inch, six hundred, or two inch, excuse me, 260 thousandths, okay, 250 thousandths is a quarter inch. So I just drilled a quarter inch hole all the way through, and then I was able to tap it in the rest of the way with a hammer, okay, but you gotta make sure everything's square, okay? And then I just turned it perpendicular. This is the shortest set screw I have, okay? But this is what I'm trying to tell you, is uh, like if you go to auctions or garage sales, whatever, look around for these little set screws. These things are invaluable. Uh, a lot of people don't like the high-speed steel tool bits anymore because you know, carbide inserts. I, I use a lot of carbide inserts for the little machining I do, okay? But I got a whole big box of uh, high-speed steel uh, down in my basement. A friend of my dad's, uh, some guy approached him in a bar or something, just had this big box and paid 50 bucks, dude. So uh, I had done a lot of favors for this guy, so I ended up, you know, he, he bought this box of stuff for me. So I got a whole big box of high-speed steel tool bits use them to make my own tools. When you start getting into turning also on the lathe, you know, make boring bars out of these things and stuff, it's always, it's just, it's so easy, so quick. And it's a thing too where, you know, I, I don't know if I'm ever gonna do anything like this ever again. So I didn't wanna spend too much time making a, you know, real elaborate, nice tool in that, you know, I, I'm sure I will use this again you know, but it's it's like, you know, when I might, I, I don't know, you know, so, so that's, you know, things you can make, and as I go along, I'll show you how I do all this stuff, too, okay, and I, I should have turned the camera on, like I said, I didn't want to get into machining, but I got to get this done, I haven't got a video out in a little while, so I figured, you know, I, I'll just show you this, so, um, 
you know, as far as pattern making, I, I got to get on those cylinders, but it's, uh, it's Wednesday right now, so tomorrow I'm, I'm, I'm booked all day, you know, Friday, uh, maybe I'll see if I can uh, get some, some uh, stuff going with the cylinder on Friday or something, so I just, I got a lot of stuff to do. Um, guy down in Amish country that owns a uh, mill, he called, the lumber's ready, so we're going to go pick that up, I'll try to take the camera along. Like I said, I'll see if uh, if I have the camera, I'll bring it and then and I'll, I'll show you. But like I said, it's uh, um, Amish guys that usually don't like their picture taken in that. So we'll, we'll see how that goes, you know. Um, I got that coming. Um, I got another set of castings. I got a meat machine for Dean. Like I said, I don't want to get into machining, but I guess if I'm doing them, I'm doing them too. So. Uh, we'll get on that. So anyhow, what I did real quick with this, um, this is going to do another short one again, okay? So on this, we just surface one side. That's casting side. It's the bottom. It's no big deal. All right, so what I did was instead of putting these up on parallels, like a machinist would usually put these up on a parallel and, um, you know, make sure they're nice, perfectly straight and at this. I got a piece of three quarter inch plywood on there that's straight enough for what we're doing for here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is uh, I've got the machine side here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is take my square, and I, I got it flush here too, so I'm gonna take that there, okay? Now, a couple ways I can clamp it down. I can clamp it down up on the top, but that's just getting out there a little bit too much. Um, I didn't want to clamp it in here because you can see it's machined. So what I did, wood shop again, just cut a little piece of wood, and we're going to put a clamp on it, clamp it down, okay? So we'll put this in here. I did the one already, so I know where I'm at with everything. Okay. Um, here again, like I said, I don't want to get too detailed in there, but we'll get detailed. You got to watch how you clamp these things out. The clamp, clamps actually have to clamp down into the work piece, okay? You can't have the clamps, you know, up like that because you're actually clamping these backstops or holders down, okay? Risers, all right? So you'd actually be clamping those down, and I kid you not, like, I shouldn't diss the guy because he passed away, but my old, my old foreman Joe, uh, like I said, when we were, uh, when I was at Arrow, you know, I had, I had a lot of experience on the machines. I already go through machine trades, worked in the machine shop, you know, in high school a little bit, and that, learned a ton from that guy. Um, another little quick little ramble about that dude in a minute, too. Um, learned a lot you know so Joe just he was kind of self-taught doing metal work and the original shop that he worked in it was called Globe Pattern and uh, Globe was actually owned by Bob Quirm that was the manager of the pattern shop at Arrow that's a guy that, that hired me okay and uh, so when Bob sold Globe to uh, Aero Aluminum, they became Precision Mold and, and Pattern, okay? They actually worked for Precision Mold Pattern. Um, what happened was, uh, you know, at Globe, they only had, they had a bridge port like this in a, in a small metal aid. They, they didn't really do a lot of machining. It was just, you know, like if you had to make a specialty tool or, or like little, you know, metal core box or something, nothing real big, you know? So Joe basically was kind of self-taught a little bit in the machining area. So we had a job where we made some aluminum like boxes for core boxes. And what, uh, we'll get into this later. Um, we, we had to pour urethane core boxes, okay? And instead of using wood frames for them, which is kind of pretty much traditional, um, this was a high high volume, you know, they need a lot of these castings. The company was, I uh, can't remember if it was Mac or some company that had a lot of money. We made actually 
patterns for boxes and uh, we machined those and poured urethane uh, core box. So they were aluminum backed urethane core boxes. Okay, that's what they're called. So Joe was up on the milling machine milling, you know, these things flat and straight. They have to be flat and straight. So he had, he was clamping the clamps down and I was walking by him like, you know, hey, aren't you supposed to have the clamps into the job? And go, oh, kid, kid, you don't know nothing. Go, 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 you know. So I just turned around the corner. I heard, kabam, and just stuff flying all over. Went around the corner here, and thing sure enough flew off the table. So we'll teach you how to make sure you clamp stuff down here. Um, this is, you know, we're just drilling some holes, so it's not, got to clamp them down, but not, you know, it's not like we're taking a big fly cutter or, or shell mill or something, okay? So, and, and I, I should this Joe, you know, I, I, I tell you one thing, yeah, I learned so much from that guy. He learned one thing from me, I guess. <laughs> Turn, learned how to clamp stuff down to the, the milling machine, so. And, uh, uh, oh, we're gonna beat him up one more time. Just popped into my head. We were, uh, guy I worked next to Bill, Joe, we had four guys on one side shop, four guys on the other. Uh, Joe was kitty corner to me, Bill was next door to me, Bill, in my opening, or, or when I was doing the shop tour, I had my big joiner, Bill worked at the uh, modern shop where that joiner had come from. So it was a steel mill and they had done a lot of, they used to do a lot of, um, uh, used to do a lot of styrofoam patterns so Bill could do, do styrofoam real well. So what happened, we started for the mold backings, we did big iron uh, castings for the mold backings for the mold shop. So we started bills like, hey, why do them out of wood? You use them once, just let's start making them out of styrofoam. So we started making them out of styrofoam. Well, Bill taught me how to do them. And Joe was, you know, basically very inexperienced. So Bill ended up retiring a year or two before Joe. We had a real big, big, big pattern to do for uh, big molds, the biggest mold we had made, you know, since I had been there. Yeah, Joe and I were doing, I was doing one half, he was doing the other one, and I was just, I was kicking his ass on this thing, and he, he was getting so bad, but Bill taught me, you know, all kinds of shortcuts and stuff, it, it, that was fun too, but, you know, I, I tell you one thing, that to this day, the guy taught me a lot of stuff, and probably still don't know half the stuff they can do, you know, so, he, he was a phenomenal, him and my dad are both, Phenomenal pattern makers, I tell you. It's just, a, just not like I said, not so much pattern makers or phenomenal craftsmen, you know. And uh, it, it, I'm, I'm glad I, I did that, you know. So I tell you what, I'm gonna work on this side for a minute, and then when I uh, come up here, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Okay, hang tight, guys. Okay, guys, I'm on the front side, so I turned you back on. All right, I uh, already have my centers marked out. I got them punched. I got a center drill in my chuck, and as you can see, it, it's a longer, hopefully you can see, I'll move you guys up close in a minute. It's a longer center drill. Another thing, you see some longer center drills, you know, at auctions, you know, grass heads, whatever, snake, those things up, they come in real handy, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna center drill, take the center drill out of the chuck, just go ahead and chuck up it's aluminum, we're doing really good with just driving, but uh, drilling a 5 8 hole right into the aluminum. <coughs> Excuse me, and that's why we got the plywood underneath. I'm going into the plywood, not into the table. Like I said, machinists would put parallels to raise that up off the bed of the, the milling machine so when they drill, they don't drill into the table. <coughs> Excuse me. Then what we'll do is we'll take the chuck out. Put this thing in back here. Move this lever over to the side, and there's a lever over here. You change that, it goes into back gear, slower gear, okay? So the only problem when you put this into uh, this machine into back gear, you gotta, there's forward and reverse. So instead of it going forward, you gotta put it in reverse, okay? 
So that, that's not a big deal with that. Um, one real quick thing, the other day when I was explaining the head a little bit, this is this is called the hand, okay? I was saying how we just, you know, we're drilling with the handle here, and you can pull this handle out and use the hand wheel. I, I haven't used it in a long time, sorry. So if you pull this handle out, the spindle will just move up and down by itself, okay? And there's three different speeds that you can run over there, okay? There's a little button here you pull out. When you pull this out, that, that makes it so that you can use a handle, okay? This handle, all right? So it, it's just, it's been a bit, so. Um, and like I said, one, one of these days I'll do a whole thing on the bridge port, we'll go over this whole thing, and then every, every time I get it on, I'm going to show you. Okay. I'm going to move you up real close to show you. Um, one of the things I'm doing, i got to do eight of these holes. i got four of them done, or i got six done. I just got these last two. Um, when I use this boring bar, I put it back here, okay? You don't want that thing flying around, okay? you got to slow it down. I probably should have it stationary, use the table or the handle or something, just being real careful because I'm kind of in a hurry getting going. That's a bad thing to do too, get in a hurry, but you know, this one, I, I mean, I should be good, so I'm not worried about it too much. Let me get you up close here, guys. Hang tight. Okay, like I said, we're going to center drill first, put a little coolant. Uh, it's just water and a special cooling oil, okay? Uh, like I said, I should be changing speeds on these things. Uh, we'll go over some speeds and feeds one day, but here again, I, I gotta get this job done. I'm not making any money on this job whatsoever. So, I kinda gotta go on it here. And then, like I said, I'm kinda holding Dean up. Dean wants to get his machine built here, so. Uh, this is a little, little fast for this one. I think, uh, I don't know, it's a 5 8 drill. I think, like, I think they're supposed to be able to go five, 500 RPM, 520 or something, but that might be just in steel. This, but this will work. Okay, now, like I said, we'll show you another time. But uh, I'm gonna take this chuck out here. And then my, um, I got a chuck that will hold a 5 8 diameter. Actually, if you see this, I, I cut the, the shank of this down. I can fit this in a drill, a hand drill. All right, so um, my drill that can hold 5 8 uh, my drill chuck, I'm sorry, um, I, I lost the key to it, so I got to get another key, so that's why I'm just using the collet, okay? Tighten this down, and before I get it going, I'm going to put it in the back here, okay? Now, this is important when you put it in the back here. You gotta spin the spindle. Or when you're taking it out, you gotta spin this because some gears mesh. Alright. Alright, so there you go. I gotta watch this too because I've been hitting the side a little bit on a couple of them here. Just pull a little spot face, it's called a spot face. Okay, and that's so that the bolt and washer will fit nice and uh, nice and flat in there, okay? So, one of the things, like I said here too, you know, chip brushes, get chip brushes. These are little, they call them acid brushes. Um, you can do this several different ways. I've got a little, little container full, you know, I've, I've been brushing some coolant on. Um, 
I'll say I have a little little squirt bottle too. You know, but it's just I don't need that much, so I don't want to waste. So the coolant you can get at any uh, machine tool store where um, they sell tooling. Now here, let's see if we can let's hear that snap. That was the gears falling in. Now if you don't twist that, you don't hear that snap. You turn those gears, or um, you know, you switch gears basically. What'll happen is you turn the machine on, turn the spindle on. That'll just grain like you wouldn't believe. And if you're in a shop full of guys, it's embarrassing. So don't embarrass yourself. Uh, you know, keep your mind on what you're doing. Make sure you don't always forget to, to spin that spindle a little bit, okay? So last hole, and we're done. Dean will be happy. They'll have these pieces, and then uh, I did make um, two more pieces for them. Help if I tighten that chuck all the way in there. Um, he might have a couple more pieces that he wants to make. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. All right, well, I, I, I could use a wiggler, but right now it's just this is good enough. Like I said, Dean, Dean, like I said, I, I keep on telling you guys, you know, do things as professional as you can. And I mean, I think these are going to look way better than Dean was just to, uh, he collects scrap metal and he's got, you know, Dean, Dean's a smart guy. He always, uh, he's always building things and building something better. And so he collects, you know, metal and all that crap. So he's going to weld a bunch of crap up and it wasn't going to look good. So I want to try to get a little more professional here. So this will be way better than what he was going to do anyhow. So that's the way I look at it. So just keep on drilling and uh, we're uh, making a little noise with this, not a big deal. And in you go. One more spot face and we're done. I can call Dean up and see what he can do. I'm not going to be able to get up to the foundry for probably, uh, it's Wednesday today. I'm not going to be able to get up there until next Tuesday unless other things happen too. So, like I've been saying, sound like a worn old broken out record. Get way, 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 way behind up there. So, last spot face. Oops. Yep, see it. Turn it on forward. It's got to go on backwards. And we're going to clear everything. Done, guys. Okay, guys, got a job done finally. It feels good when you get a job done, all right? So, anyhow, real quick, um, I, you know, I'm trying, I, I'm trying to get some pattern. I've been really slow customer-wise, pattern-wise, too. So, um, everybody's just still really slow from the COVID thing, I think, I'm, I'm hoping. So, anyhow, we got this job done. Um, I said I got some personal stuff to do for the rest of the week. I'm not going to be able to do anything. I'm trying to wrap those uh, uh, rental units up for my mom. Hopefully that'll be done. And then, um, you know, next week get back to getting it. All right. For sure, like I said, I, I got to get on those uh, cylinders. Um, if I don't get anything from, I, I got a couple little jobs. I got another Y pipe for the motorcycle guy. That's, you know, we did one of those once already. And, you know that's gonna be kind of uh, kind of same old same old. So um, I got two other little jobs 
for that guy again that, that he doesn't want his stuff on. I gotta get that stuff done. But if I don't get anything in here pretty soon, like I said, I wanted to try to wrap projects up. I don't wanna, I got so many projects out and doing. I, I, I gotta get some stuff wrapped up. But what I'll do is, um, I wanna keep you guys going too. So those train signals, um, I, I've got to do, oh, I'll show you how to do, I got the two access doors, we got to make permanent equipment for those. So I'll show you how to do those, that, that'll be a, a good session. And then what I want to do, those are, I forget the terminology for all these stuff, but these, these are the signals that you see on the side of the railroad net. So they have smaller ones, they're called dwarf signals, they're in the yard where there's you know, a whole bunch of rails where all the trains sit. So I'm gonna make a set. I found a, a, a picture of a dwarf light that I wanna do also. And like I said, that's gonna be something for me that I'm gonna sell down the road. And we could use some up at the uh, train club and that too, you know. But you know, down the road, hopefully I'll be able to sell some of these things for myself and that. So um, that, that'll be an interesting one to do. So we'll, we'll get going on that thing. And uh, that, that one pouring basin, that thing's still sitting here. I haven't heard of anything about that thing. Uh, you know, if, if, if we get that, I mean, yeah, I'm sure he would have come up, you know, his customer would have wanted that back, you know, so I don't know what, what the holdup is with that one. That'll be a good one if we ever get it going. So, so let's bear with me another couple weeks, guys. So like I said, I'll try to clean up some of my personal stuff I got going in that, and then, uh, We'll get back to some real pattern making, but I'll try to keep you know some stuff going with you so that we can you know stay in touch and that and uh, keep things going. So like I said, we had a five thousand hours of stuff to go here, so got to stick with me that long, man. So anybody, anyhow, appreciate everybody that has subscribed. We hit over hundred this week. That's awesome. Thanks for whoever number one hundred was. That was awesome, man. I, I appreciate it. So, and of course, we worked to 102 today, I think, too. So, thanks for everybody that subscribed so far. If you haven't, please do, because like I said, I want to keep this stuff going. And hit the like button for me. That'll help, I'm guessing. So, uh, with that, we'll get something else out as soon as we can. Have a good one out there, everybody, and stay safe. Mm -hmm.